So what has been the reaction to the attack on the hospital across the region? Our correspondent, John Donison, has more. Fury in the West Bank. In Ramallah, youths battled with Palestinian security forces who responded with tear gas and sound grenades. As reports of the hospital strike came in from Gaza, thousands took to the streets in protest. There's anger directed at Israel, but also at President Mahmoud Abbas and his Palestinian Authority, which many perceive as weak and lacking legitimacy. Mr Abbas announced he was cancelling a meeting with President Biden in Jordan and was flying home. There were mass protests there this evening too and clashes outside the Israeli embassy in Amman. During the foundation of Israel, when it occupied this area, they are breaching international humanitarian law. Geneva Agreement is obvious in this regard. Medical centres or hospitals should not be touched. In Turkey also, thousands rallied against Israel. As the war in Gaza escalates, it's a dangerous moment for the wider region. John Donison, BBC News. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by my colleague from BBC Arabic, Saeed Shahata. Saeed, we're still yet to know who was behind the attack or what caused it exactly, but what more are you hearing from the ground there in Gaza City? There is like two stories or two sides of the story. Uh, the Arab on both formal and informal levels, the street, ordinary people on social media and the officials like President of Egypt, the King Abdullah of Jordan, and all of this like uh, officials, all of them condemning Israel and saying Israel is behind the attack. And uh, some of them like Hamas called it like a war crime or describe it as a war crime. On the other side, Israel uh, saying it's uh, uh, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad behind that uh, misfire uh, rocket. So there is two sides of the story and it still needs to be verified who, who done that. But the problem is the outcome of it. At least 500 people died, according to the Ministry of Health uh, in Gaza. So it's disastrous. And the situation there is bad because it shelters the hospital like other facilities, shelters the people coming from the north because Gaza Strip is very small. So to move there, density is very high. So it was considered as a safe place, but now, people are suspicious and they start thinking, where can we go? So it's a problematic and put pressure on politicians to find a solution as soon as they can or sooner than, than the later uh, because the repercussion are, is, is immense. And Sayyid, it was already a difficult humanitarian situation for people in Gaza, hospitals struggling uh, to find medicine to treat patients. What kind of help is getting to the people affected by this blast at the hospital? Uh, the problem is little help because according to the World Health Organization, the WHO, saying even some like health, health facilities were, uh, were targeted by uh, airstrikes and some of the medical staff killed. In addition to that, there is uh, no food or the shortage of food and all the hope of to find a solution. If like uh, President Biden maybe find a solution to open a humanitarian, a humanitarian corridor through Rafah because there is many uh, trucks of aid waiting on the border, needing the approval of Israel to go through. I think it's, it's urgently needed because people dying, uh, if they face like difficulties in finding food or water, they queuing. And some of them like came on social media saying like, even we're going to go back to the north again because we can't find food, we can't find even safety, which we uh, took the hardship to go there from the uh, from north to the south. So now we should go back home, at least to have like some stuff to, to live on in our, in our home. 